Well, hey there, how's it going? Bobby Watts here from Watts Innovations. So recently I just announced the new MFD 3000 hydrogen fuel cell concept drone. So this is a collaboration between my company, Watts Innovations, and Intelligent Energy out of the UK. So this is their brand new 2.4 kilowatt module that's gonna allow us to fly a big drone like this, you know, with a 10 pound payload for over an hour. So I think that this is really game changing technology. So in an effort to help explain how a drone like this will work and why I think that hydrogen fuel cells really have a chance in the industrial drone market, I wanted to make this video which answers a bunch of questions regarding drones with the use of uh, hydrogen fuel cells. So I think that this is hopefully going to answer maybe any question you might have or even questions you haven't thought of yet. Now, just to know, this video is very informal, it's very off the cuff, it's not scripted. Uh, so if I were to uh, misuse a, a unit of measurement or something, uh, just go easy on me here. I was just really trying to get as much information as I could out in an informal way that's hopefully pretty entertaining to you guys. So without further ado, check it out. This is 12 things you need to know about hydrogen fuel cells working with industrial drugs. And today, I am so excited to finally be revealing what I've been up to recently. And it's this. This is a concept drone. Now, this is powered with a hydrogen fuel cell. Now, let's let that sink in for a second. A hydrogen fuel cell's been around for quite a while. It's been around since, like, the Gemini program with NASA decades ago. But finally, fuel cells have gotten small enough and powerful enough to power an aircraft like a drone like of this size. I mean, this is incredible. This is so cool. I've been doing RC aircraft. I've been involved in RC aircraft since 2003, so more than half of my life now. And by far, this is the single biggest technology that I've seen come into RC aviation probably since lithium batteries. Now, I'm not saying that this technology is going to replace anything that we have today, but all I'm going to say is that this is going to give us a very cool alternative option uh, that we've never had before. So what I wanted to do today was just kind of uh, explain everything that I've been kind of learning in the last few months while uh, looking into this hydrogen fuel cell uh, issue. You know, is this a viable option? Will this actually solve a real life problem? And I think it will. I really think it will. Um, so when I first kind of stumbled upon the fuel cell, I had more questions than I knew what to do with. So before, I really didn't even know what a fuel cell was, and I was just digging and digging and looking through articles and videos and, um, and, and everything, and have really had to teach myself a lot to figure out how it would work best with a drone and, and how to make this happen. And the awesome folks from Intelligent Energy, the manufacturer of this fuel cell, have been super helpful. So between what I've learned from them and some other guys and some articles, hopefully I can answer a lot of questions that you guys might have just by reading the title of, you know, this is a hydrogen fuel cell drone. So in this video, I'm going to make it a little bit long form. I just really want to make it nice and thorough to hopefully kind of explain how it works with a drone. So I've come up with 12 main topics that I want to address in this video, and I'm sure there will be more. So if you have any questions or whatever, you can always email me or hit me up on uh, the social media platforms, and I can hopefully explain them uh, further in detail. Also, I'll be at the AUVSI show next week in Chicago, and hopefully we'll be doing a lot more video and maybe some Q&A and that kind of thing uh, for social media content as well. So, before I get into this video, I want to throw out two main caveats before I even begin. So number one, uh, when I talk about drones with a fuel cell, I'm mainly referring to industrial, professional, heavier, bigger drones. I'm not really referring to any drone that you can hold into your, in your hand or something small like a Mavic or Phantom or a Spark or something. What I'm referring to is larger drones that are carrying payloads of, you know, I don't know, 8, 10, 20, 50 pounds and beyond. And for drones that are out in the workforce being used on professional movie sets uh, or cargo hauling or flying expensive LiDAR 
sensors or cameras or whatever it may be. So we're really talking about like high-end professional drones. Like that's the first one mainly. And number two, I just want to throw this out that this video is going to be less about this exact setup of a fuel cell and this exact stack and this exact tank and this exact drone. This is more of a concept. How do fuel cells work uh, in drones? And once again, are they a viable alternative? So just wanted to throw those two things out before I begin. So let's get right into it. So first and foremost, what is a hydrogen fuel cell? Well, my friends, I'm here to answer that for you. So a hydrogen fuel cell is more or less just a generator. So if you look at this drone, we have an onboard generator generating electricity. And in short, what it does is it's going to take the high pressured hydrogen gas in the tank, and it's going to mix that with the oxygen in the air. And through the stack and through the chemistry and the various processes that's designed inside the fuel cell, it's going to generate electricity with a byproduct of a little bit of water. So that water doesn't even uh, condense. It's not even going to be visible. It's just going to leave warm mist around the stack itself. But in general, we're just creating electricity. So once again, we're taking high pressured hydrogen gas. So this is filled up to 300 bar. So it's like 4,500 PSI. That's high. So that's like double of a scuba tank. Um, so we have some very high pressured hydrogens in, in that tank itself. And so when it's mixed with the oxygen, we're generating just clean electricity with clean water vapor uh, as a byproduct. So a hydrogen fuel cell has been around for quite a while. It was used, as I mentioned, in the NASA Gemini program as what, kind of where it was first used. I think they had one on the space shuttle. And they've been kind of making some waves over the last few years. Um, so we'll get to this later, but I think that because the way in which a fuel cell works, it's going to be perfect for drones. So next up, why is a drone a perfect vehicle for a hydrogen fuel cell and why maybe a car isn't. So inevitably, if you're like me, a millennial like me, we find out, oh, hydrogen fuel cell, pop it into Google, pop it into YouTube. And what do you find? Well, in general, what I was seeing was kind of a lot of hating on hydrogen fuel cells, but mainly in the automotive market. And after doing a bunch of digging, kind of what I'm basically seeing is that a hydrogen fuel cell is a less efficient process of taking energy and powering a vehicle than, let's say, a lithium battery. So, for example, if we're going, if we had a certain amount of energy and we can power a car with that energy, we could either simply take that energy and store it into a battery, or we could take that energy and create hydrogen gas with that energy and then power the vehicle that way. And basically what they're seeing is that, well, it's a simple physics, is that just taking that energy and sticking it in the battery is a more efficient process than generating the hydrogen gas and letting that power the fuel cell. But why does it matter for a drone? Like that's a car market, that's great. I understand that's completely different. It's a different argument with a drone. Why is it so important with a drone? energy density. So for a given pound of our power plant, in this case a fuel cell stack and a hydrogen tank, for a given pound of this versus a given pound of a lithium battery, we're generating more electricity with the fuel cell than we are with the battery that the battery can store. So this is so important in drone world basically because of two things. Number one, with a drone especially, we have to lift our power plant. Where with a car, it kind of, it rolls. It's got gravity and it's rolling and it's got momentum. And so the car doesn't care as much as much about the weight of the vehicle, where with the drone, every single ounce is absolutely critical for how long this aircraft is going to stay in the air. So it basically performance. So our power plant needs to be as light as possible. And number two, we are regulated here in the US, for example, to 55 pounds and below. So this drone, for example, in its battery form is designed to lift about a 25 pound payload and be right at that 55 pound legal limit. Now with this fuel cell, this one in particular is a 2.4 kilowatt system. So we'll be able to get about 10 to 12 pounds of a payload with this all at staying at 2.4 kilowatts. So this exact drone can lift about a 10 to 12 pound payload. So because of the weight and the energy density, that to me is what makes it an absolutely perfect candidate for a drone.
Okay, so now that we know how the fuel cell works, what are the various parts that's involved in putting it on a drone and powering a drone? Well, it's really simple actually. We have two main components. We have a stack and then we have the tank itself. So this stack in particular for this aircraft is the newly unveiled 2.4 kilowatt system by a company called Intelligent Energy out of the UK. So this is still in the prototype phase and this one is going to be released towards the end of the year, if not beginning of next year. So this stack right here, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, is what's generating the electricity based on the oxygen and the hydrogen coming together inside the stack. So it's producing electricity. So once again, we have a onboard generator. So the stack is generating the electricity and then we have the tank. The tank is a simple, uh, this one for example is a six liter tank that can hold high pressured hydrogen up to 300 bar, as I mentioned, so 4,500 PSI. And so the hydrogen is stored within this tank. Now these tanks are really special. It has a plastic lining uh, to allow the hydrogen not to escape uh, and then it's covered by lightweight carbon fiber and other composites and then it's got a metal uh, outside structure and these are uh, they drop them from 300 feet drop tested approved ballistic approved um, it's really impressive at how much these tanks are really rated. So these tanks are made by various manufacturers and then they have to get a certain approval for them to be a allowed in the US or anywhere else in the world. But basically the tank is just similar to a scuba tank or a propane tank or uh, oxygen tank if you're a welder or whatever it may be. It's just a, a, a simple well-built tank to hold in this high pressured hydrogen gas. So between the tank and the stack itself, that's really all you need in order to make a hydrogen fuel cell power a drone. So next up, how is a hydrogen fuel cell going to work in a drone? So here I'm gonna to try to be a little specific so that you drone guys can understand exactly what's gonna happen here. So the coolest part about it and the reason that I think fuel cells are definitely a winner is because it can be retrofitted, if you will, onto a standard electric aircraft, onto a standard drone. So here we are producing electricity. That's what it's doing. It's generating electricity on board. Whereas a battery is taking that stored energy and we're using that stored energy to, for propulsion to power our motors. But instead of using a battery, we're just simply gonna generate it on board the aircraft. So the output of the fuel cell is literally going to just plug into my, with my battery connectors and just power my main rails, which is then going to power the, uh, the motors in flight. So it's really pretty simple. So basically you're just going to take a tank that's full of hydrogen, you're going to turn on the fuel cell, and basically right then and there it's going to start producing electricity. So basically what we've got is just an internal little nice generator that's nice and clean, nice and quiet, and it's going to power the aircraft. So this one, as I mentioned, 2.4 kilowatt. This aircraft with a 12 pound payload will generate about 2.4 kilowatts, uh, or require 2.4 kilowatts worth of power in order for it to fly. So with this tank and this fuel cell, we're gonna be able to fly for about 50 minutes, five zero minutes until that tank is empty. And so this one uses a DJI A3 flight controller and Intelligent Energy's interface. It's just gonna beautifully interface with the A3. It'll also work with Pixhawk or any other flight controller so it can utilize the UART port and other telemetry ports in order to feed the information from the fuel cell into the flight controller. So basically, once you turn it on, you're ready to go. You could just go ahead and fly your drone for 50 minutes. Now, what do we do in the event that a line busts or we need more power than 2.4 kilowatts or we run out of fuel in midair? Well, Intelligent Energy thought of this. So in there, I've got two small 6S packs which are used for uh, backup and redundancy. So my whole system here runs on 12S, so 50 volts, which is what the fuel cell is outputting. And then we've got the batteries to act in two different ways, which is so cool. So check this out. Number one, in the event of a gas failure or a fuel system failure or whatever happens with the fuel cell, if it were to fail completely, it'll kick on to a lithium battery. So it'll switch over all power to lithium batteries. The lithium batteries will be set at a certain voltage where we will then throw an alarm to the flight controller. The flight controller will know, oh, we're on battery power, it's time to land. And then the aircraft will just land itself. And with these small batteries, I can fly for about a minute and a half, which should be fine to just kind of uh, stop whatever we're doing and go ahead and land. 
plant. So number one, number one, the batteries are used as like a reserve, more or less, just like a, uh, a, a fail safe, if you will. Number two, what the battery is going to do is it's going to be able to give an extra boost should the system demand more than 2.4 kilowatts. So that to me is really cool. So maybe we're just generally drawing around 2 kilowatts, 2.2, 2.4, but then for whatever reason, maybe we need to give full throttle and sideways at 50 miles an hour or something. So the batteries will be able to feed in even more power to provide more than 2.4 kilowatts. And then the system, once it returns back to its nominal 2 kilowatts, 2.4 kilowatts, then the system is actually going to recharge the batteries in flight. So that is super cool. So that right here is a basis of how the hydrogen fuel cell is going to work in a drone. Next up, energy density and flight time. This is huge. This is the whole game right here. So let's just jump right into it. So with energy density, if you have like a hydrogen fuel cell, for example, if we have one pound of a hydrogen fuel cell versus one pound of a lithium battery, how's that going to stack up? Which one is the better option? Well, let me give you some numbers and you can decide for yourself. So let's take a look at this exact drone here. So this is the MFD 3000, the hydrogen fuel cell edition, the concept version right here that we've got. So this exact setup right here is a 2.4 kilowatt system. So this is capable of providing 2.4 kilowatts of power to the aircraft. Now this is a six liter hydrogen tank on top. So a six liter hydrogen tank will give us 2.2 kilowatt hours worth of power over time. So that means that if this aircraft draws 2.2 kilowatts in a hover, let's say, then we can fly for an hour. Well, let's just say we're going to be pushing this right to the max of its 2.4 kilowatt uh, capability. So we're going to be flying right around 55 minutes or so. So with this setup right here, with the fuel cell, with a probably a 10 to 12 pound payload that will be pushing the fuel cell right at its max in ideal theoretical conditions, we can fly for about 55 minutes with this tank here. Okay, so now let's look at a lithium battery. How many lithium batteries do we need to get the same amount of power? So if we wanted to get uh, uh, 2.2 kilowatt hours, we would need to have a 12S 44,000 milliamp lithium battery. So that we would take like a 6S 22,000. So we would need four of them. So we'd put two of them in series, take the other two, put them in series. We'd have a two piece setup. So that would give us 12S 44,000. And the weight of that would be around 22 pounds for those in batteries. Okay, so now we have a fuel cell which is weighing about 17 pounds, and we have the battery which is weighing about 22 pounds. All right, so right there we're about 25% less weight in the fuel cell versus the battery to lift this with that exact power and that exact payload. Well, here's where it gets really interesting. So let's just say we now want to double our flight time. So now let's just say we want to double the amount of time that this can, can stay in the air. What do we need to do for the fuel cell? What do we need to do for the battery? Well, the fuel cell, the stack is gonna stay the same because remember, this is like a generator and this is like our gas tank. So all we need to do is just increase our gas tank, but the generator stays the same. So we're not gonna be doubling the weight of the fuel cell. We're only going to add on the additional weight of the tank, which is about seven pounds. So now we can, we can produce 4.4 kilowatt hours, only adding an additional seven pounds, not an additional 17 pounds. So now we're going to be able to fly at a weight of the, the generator system will now be around 24 pounds, which is very good. We're not doubling in weight. We're only going up a little bit. Where with a battery, if I wanted to double the amount of output power that this has, the capacity of the batteries, I would simply double it. So now my 22 pound battery becomes 44 pounds. So with a fuel cell, it's working in such a way that if we want to continue to improve on that flight time, we're only expanding to a bigger tank. We're not doubling the entire uh, 
generator system itself. And that is the key. That right there is why I believe that this will work in industrial drones at scale. And even better, I'm talking to more manufacturers who manufacture custom tanks and, and everything, and we can use a smaller tank and pressurize it more to put in even more hydrogen in there. So the weight of the tank is even a variable where we can go with some custom tanks and really get the weight of the tank down. So it's, it's really interesting how this is going to play out. Now, to be fair, if we were the, the main drawback that I see with batteries is that you're constantly like if to double your power, you are then doubling the weight of the battery. But now you have to carry this big weight of the battery. So therefore you have less payload or you have bigger motors and then you grow and then now you don't fly as long because you have bigger motors and it just becomes a compounding issue where with batteries we're always kind of doubling that weight whereas with a hydrogen fuel cell the drawback is the power of the fuel cell so with this one we are limited at how much payload can it actually lift next up why hydrogen and why not any other hybrid form? So by hi any other hybrid form, I mean an electric aircraft with some sort of a generator or vessel or something generating electricity to power the aircraft. And most notably, I've seen a decent amount of aircraft out there which are, uh, let's say, different power sources. So number one, you could have tethered tethered aircraft, which is great. I think they're awesome for surveillance and uh, maybe border patrol or, or um, you know, sporting events, something like that. But with a tether, you can't really fly around. You can't traverse. You can only go up and down. So you're a, you're a periscope. So I think for those applications, if that application will work for you, a tether is perfect. But let's say you need to fly around. What other way can we use a drone? I'm not talking about like a like a VTOL aircraft with wings. I'm just talking about like a, a hexa, quadcopter, hexacopter, uh, octocopter, X8, whatever it may be. I'm just talking about a drone, a flying platform. So what other ways can we generate electricity on board? Well, the second one that I've evaluated and looked at is gasoline powered. So we could have a high powered gasoline engine on board, which would weigh anywhere from five to 15 pounds, depending on how much output power we want, with a gas tank um, burning fuel and producing electricity. So we would have an alternator on board, more or less, generating electricity to power the electric motors. So I think in some industries that can absolutely work. If your drone is out in the middle of Farmville and you're just flying back and forth and no one's around you, I think you're absolutely fine. But I think the biggest problem these gasoline generator um, drones are facing is noise, period. So the drone's already loud enough. You have the electric uh, motors and the noise of the propellers and it sounds like a swarm of bees or whatever you want to compare it to. But if we now throw a gasoline motor on top of that, I think in some some instances is this not going to work. Like on a film set, I don't believe that's going to work. Um, the, yeah, it's already loud enough and they don't want to hear the buzzing of the, the, uh, the gasoline motor and it's screaming in a hover. So I think number one, noise is not going to allow the gasoline generator to work in the long run. Um, number two is tuning. So if we were to tune it here at sea level and then go up to maybe 10,000 feet or so, uh, the tuning would definitely change and your operator would need to be skilled in tuning in order to make that work up at sea level or up at a different altitude. Uh, number three, vibration. Um, it's just general physics. When we have a single cylinder engine spinning at many a thousand RPM, it's going to vibrate. Uh, we then need isolation dampeners and uh, things of that nature to isolate the gasoline engine uh, from getting into the aircraft or even worse, its sensor. So its camera, uh, the lens. So that's just another thing we would have to um, battle out if we were to put a gasoline generator in this aircraft. Where, as I mentioned with hydrogen, I think it's so good because uh, it's clean, it doesn't spin, there's no, there's not, no rotating parts in it, it's quiet, um, you know, there's no oil, so with gasoline we would have oil possibly leaking, traveling with it could be a nightmare because it's had oil ran through it, therefore you wouldn't be able to uh, put the aircraft on like a commercial flight, where with this we could just uh, empty out all the hydrogen out of the tank and we could fly with the tank too, like no problem. This doesn't have any hazmat uh, uh, materials on it um, uh, if the tank is empty. So 
been looking at various ways to power a drone for a long time, and I think this is it. I think because of those reasons, this kind of checks all the boxes. This hits all the criteria for what a long-range industrial drone needs, and I think the fuel cell really does it. So the next question that's probably on your mind, how the heck do I fill up the tank? Well, we've got a few different options for you. So let's say you're a customer, you're interested in flying a uh, 10 pound payload for an hour uh, using the MFD 3000 fuel cell edition. So once again, a few different options for you in the USA. Uh, in any other country, you might need to look. This could change a little bit for you depending on what kind of tanks you can get and transport regulations. So uh, just take a look uh, based on where you live. But in the US, here's what I can offer you. So uh, number one, there is a service, there's a company out there, for example, one of them is called IGX, and they offer a service where they will take these tanks, so this is a six liter tank, for example, uh, you could buy multiple six liter tanks for a few hundred bucks a pop, and then you can send back the tanks to them, and they will, you send them the empties, and they will send you fully filled up tanks ready to go. So if you had a shoot and you had maybe five tanks, 10, 10 tanks, then you would just get them back and you would have all your tanks filled up ready to go. And they would send that probably by FedEx ground and um, you would get those in a few days. So that's one option for you if you want nothing to do with it at all. Uh, the next method, which would probably be my preferred method, would just be to simply get a uh, refueling station or a compressor, compressor station. Next, you would just have to call an industrial gas supply company. So if you were a welder and needed oxygen and acetylene for welding, or if you had a, a warehouse and you had a, a forklift that ran off of a propane tank, you know, these industrial gas supply companies just deliver gases to business. And this is really no different. Or you can simply call out like an air gas or prax air and just tell them you want gas hydrogen and more than likely they have it um, so i called a few of the suppliers in the area here and they've got tanks where in a service where they would literally just drop tanks off at a business address at a warehouse and then you could take that tank that big tank and then fill your own tanks and I think that that would probably make the most sense. If you're gonna hop into this, just being able to fill up tanks on the spot would be best for you. So same as if you've seen them uh, refill propane tanks at the hardware store, um, it's really the same. We're just taking a gas and transferring it into this tank, then that gas is being used to produce electricity. So it's really pretty simple. Um, best of yet is we could take these tanks and we can put them in a proper uh, storage compartment in a vehicle in a truck or something and i can drive all over the u.s and it's not hazmat it's not dangerous goods it is not so that's what really makes it easier to to work around so if you were to fly with this aircraft for example what would you do well number one you could ship tanks to yourself um, number two, you could call up IGX and then they could send you tanks. You could rent tanks from them for a day rate or something. So this is pretty flexible. Uh, you could get a like a K type hydrogen tank uh, delivered to your job site. You could simply just bring your compressor and you could fill up your own tanks on the job site. So it's pretty flexible, I think. Um, it's, just a, it's just as hard to deal with this as it is with batteries. Um, let's face it, I mean, lithium batteries are really difficult to transport a across the country if you have a shoot somewhere. So I, I do not see that as a really big issue. Uh, it's just a matter of learning it, learning the process, and making it happen. Next up, how safe is this? Well, it's all relative, right? I mean, we are flying a drone with large 23 inch spinning propellers. So that does fly very expensive things uh, around through the sky. So I guess safety is all relative. I mean, we're not working with bubble wrap here. This is a, this is a complex mechanical machine. Um, so if we were to compare it to lithium batteries, for example, I would argue that I've seen lithium batteries do some pretty crazy things. Um, in a hard crash, a lithium battery can puncture and it can ignite and it can cause a wildfire or, or anything else. So I, I think when we begin to talk about safety for fuel cells, we need to compare it to what we're working with, whether it's a gasoline powered uh, aircraft or a battery powered aircraft or now hydrogen powered aircraft. Um, hydrogen does have some great things going for it. Number one, as I've mentioned, all the tanks have to be approved by a governing body here in the USA or any other country. They need to be approved in order to be allowed for use. So this tank, as I previously mentioned, it, this has 
This can live through drop tests up to hundreds of feet without exploding, uh, ballistic tests, um, overpressure tests. It's got a bleed off valve if you overpressurize the tank. So it really has some great things going for it. Another great thing that hydrogen has going for it is that it's lighter than air. So if hydrogen were to ever leak or escape, it's going to rise. It's not going to drop like propane will and, and gather in a central spot. It's going to rise and just vent to the atmosphere. Um, so in a hard crash, if this were to catch on fire and ignite, for example, yes, the Hindenburg was hydrogen and it can be a very bad thing. Like it can be very bad, just as bad as lithium batteries, I would argue. So going back to it, it's all relative. Um, if you're going to fly this, especially in like a dry area, have a fire extinguisher nearby. The same recommendation I would have if you're going to be flying a lithium battery powered aircraft, especially in a dry climate. Um, as far as handling, installing the tanks, you know, you would just want to treat these tanks carefully, especially during transport and filling. But it would be the same as if you're dealing with a scuba tank or a propane tank or an oxygen tank for welding or something. You know, you would just want to treat it with care. Uh, you wouldn't want to have this rolling around in the back of your pickup truck on the way to the job site. But it's all relative. In general, I do think this is very safe and I do think that the safety will only improve. Next up is the workflow. What would the workflow be for a job? Let's say I get hired for a job and I want to fly my fuel cell drone. What's the workflow going to be like? Well, number one, as we mentioned, you got to obtain your tanks. So let's say we're going on a movie set or we have a, um, a job to take a LIDAR sensor and scan miles and miles of a particular area. So number one, we want to make sure that we've got enough tanks or we have the ability to refill tanks there on the spot. So that's going to be critical. Just in the same way, if you have lithium batteries and you need to arrange your charger setups and the, how many batteries you have and everything, it's going to take the same amount of calculation calculations and it, you only knew you know that if you know you as a professional drone service provider if you know how many flights you have to do that day uh, you should be ready for that so number one figure out how much um, how much hydrogen you need uh, how many tanks you need and if you can refill there on the spot but other than that it's real simple so pretty much you're going to go ahead and you're going to fly and once your tank is empty you're going to come back and land and number one you could refill that tank within just a few minutes honestly just refill go right back up fly for another hour or you would simply swap the tank out and then refill that other tank uh, as the, uh, the second tank is flying. So it's pretty simple. It's really nothing too complicated. And that way we are like a battery where we can just simply swap out and just get multiple flights in a day without really much stop. Um, other than that, just you'd have to worry about just handling your, your charging setup. Your, your tank charging, your tank filling setup, and you have to worry about what you're gonna do with your empty tanks and your full tanks. But um, I don't see this, you're, you're not gonna be charging in the hotel anymore on a job site. This, you can fill these tanks up in just a few minutes and you're good to go. So I think this will make the on the job site a little bit easier than the lithium batteries because you won't have, be having to deal with so many lipos. So for on the job site, it's gonna be pretty easy. So next up, how did I kind of stumble onto this? Well, I'm really lucky to be honest. Uh, the awesome folks and the awesome team at Intelligent Energy reached out to me and saw that I'm a custom drone manufacturer and that I take power systems and such and integrate them into drones for customers. And uh, so far it's been really good. It's been such a learning experience and I, I couldn't be working with a better group of people. Um, so Intelligent Energy, once again, they're based out of the UK and they've been making these fuel cells for over 20 years. Uh, they've been making fuel cells for scooters and dirt bikes and uh, automobiles, whatever it may be. Uh, so they've turned their focus to the UAV industry. Lucky for us, right? Uh, so they've identified the UAV industry as a perfect candidate for hydrogen fuel cells. And so now they're making these stacks for the uh, drone market. So they've already got a fuel cell out there, a 800 watt system that's working with a DJI M100 so a Matrice 100 and it's doing great. Uh, 
you can even take two of those and put them together to create a 1.6 kilowatt system for a larger drone. And now this is their newly unveiled 2.4 kilowatt system for the Matrice 600 and uh, other large multi-rotors such as this, the MFD 3000. So I really think these guys are serious. They're, they're a key player. Uh, I think it's going to take a company like this to come into the drone industry and uh, with their, their experience and, and their knowledge and really help this uh, excel to another level. So once again, this exact one is just a, a demo version. This is just a mock-up version, but they have successfully flown this. Uh, you can look up a press release they did on a project they called Project Rachel, where they did fly, I believe it was 13 pounds, maybe even 15 pound payload for uh, about 45 minutes or so. So this is in the works. It's already flying. Uh, I just can't wait to actually have this one in the air. So another one that you guys are probably all wondering by now, how much does this cost? Well, with any new technology, any new emerging technology, the cost is gonna be a little higher until it gets mass adoption, and with economies of scale, the price can come down. So because this is so new and such revolutionary technology, I believe the cost of a drone like this would be about two to two and a half times the cost of a drone of similar size, but a battery version. But with that, I don't think that that's necessarily uh, ridiculous. So if we were to look at batteries and just maybe put a cost together of uh, airtime, a cost for airtime or a cost for batteries and the battery situation, um, you know, that flight, that flight time really comes at a valuable price. So being able to fly for an hour versus 20 minutes, well, can we put a price on that? So I think that that's definitely something to keep in mind. And then also compared to batteries, um, most of my customers are going with charging solutions that range anywhere from three to $10,000, depending on how big their outfit is. I mean, heck, some even twelve, fifteen thousand $15,000 just in chargers alone. And then they're spending maybe ten dollars to $15,000 worth of lithium batteries. So these professional drones service companies are really uh, buying into the infrastructure that allows them to fly all day long with batteries and chargers. So at a higher cost of a fuel cell with longer flight time, it really makes sense. I don't think it's totally unreasonable right now. It's just at that point where the companies who understand its value are going to hop in early, I have a feeling. And then maybe once the price comes down, um, maybe at that point more can begin to uh, experiment and get a drone that's hydrogen fuel cell powered. So that's just my guess. Now, when it comes to the cost per flight of the hydrogen itself, uh, let's look at the various scenarios. So if we look at the tank refilling service, like a company like IGX offers, um, I would guess it's gonna be about maybe 30 to 35 bucks for a tank like this to get it filled up. Then the shipping cost and hazmat fees and such, but I think you'd end up being maybe like 30, 35 dollars a flight, which I think is pretty costly. But the barrier to entry is hardly non-existent. You don't need to buy any other tools. You can just simply receive filled hydrogen tanks and send away your empties. So that's definitely one thing you can consider. Another way you can look at it, and the method that I would probably go myself if I was a professional uh, drone service provider, is getting a, a, a filling station myself. So where I can order uh, like a K-tank, a K-type tank from an industrial gas supply company, and then I can just fill up my tanks. And from the calls I've made and running some basic numbers, it seems to me like it's gonna cost about maybe uh, six to $10 per flight if I fill up up my own tanks so that's like an hour flight with a six liter tank and getting that k type tank in will be anywhere from 40 to uh, 70 dollars depending on how many tanks i'm getting in at a time so as i made the reference before if i'm a welder or if i have a, a propane powered um, forklift in the warehouse i'm getting in all sorts of gases anyway so bringing in hydrogen isn't that unreasonable um, so then it comes to the generator system you need itself or the compressor or the pump that you need to take and pressurize from like a K tank, like a big tank. 
you know, five feet tall, nine inches in diameter. So you're gonna need a pump that's going to be able to take the hydrogen from the low pressure K tank and fill it up to that 300 bar for the actual flight tank. And a pump like that seems like it's gonna cost around 10,000 uh, bucks. Once again, you can evaluate that cost with like a battery charging station and it's not completely unreasonable. I think it's pretty fair. So really that's it. So you've got the cost of the tank, the cost of the fuel cell, and then the cost to get them filled. So I think in general, at scale, once you're going, you're gonna be anywhere from six to 10 bucks a flight for the hydrogen itself, and then two to two and a half times the cost of a battery powered drone to get into a hydrogen fuel cell powered drone. So not that unreasonable, especially in the early days. And finally, when? When is this gonna happen? When is this aircraft going to take flight? So from what I'm hearing from Intelligent Energy, this 2.4 module is going to be available towards the end of this year and the beginning of next year, so the beginning of 2020. Um, so I would certainly hope that just as soon as these are released, I can get one airborne and hopefully get some flight time on it and begin evaluating it and see how it actually does work. Maybe make some more informative videos to help you guys out if you're in the market for a long range, uh, heavy lifting drone, um, you, you know, you can see what you're gonna be getting into so I would expect beginning of next year we're really gonna start to see these roll out um, as I said these guys are already producing hydrogen fuel cells for the drone market so they've done it it's not their first product they certainly know how to do it so I I don't expect this to be a huge delay and because of R&D and everything they've already proved it it's going to work so I think it's really gonna be great I just can't wait to have one in hand and actually see it fly in person and so there we have it. That is a complete rundown of a hydrogen fuel cell powered drone as it stands right now here in the uh, second quarter of 2019. So if you made it this far, congrats. Um, if you're like me, you probably have more questions than anything at this point. Uh, when I first heard of hydrogen fuel cell powered drones, I didn't even know the questions to ask. And the more that I learned, the more questions that I had. So I hope that this helped kind of get you in the mindset to maybe uh, ask some more of those questions or begin to think of the workflow and how this could possibly help you in your business. Um, so once again, this is coming towards the end of this year, beginning of next year. But there's one more cool thing that I did not mention that is possibly the coolest aspect of this hydrogen fuel cell. So as I mentioned previously, Intelligent Energy has a 800 watt system that you can put together with another one to create 1.6 kilowatts. Well, they did it for this one too. So this is a 2.4 kilowatt system. I can take another one of these, put it with an additional 2.4 kilowatt system, and I can make a 4.8 kilowatt system. To give you an idea, my MFD 5000 heavy lift drone, we could lift like 30 pounds with that with that available power. Now we'd be overweight, we would require an overweight waiver, but that would allow us to fly full-blown movie cameras for an hour. That changes the game, right there. That changes the game, this is game changing. That's why I'm so excited about this. I think that this is just the, the tip of the iceberg. So many cool things are going to come of this technology. I firmly believe it, um, that I really just can't wait to see it happen. Um, so thank you guys for watching. So once again, if you have any questions at all and think that this might be a good solution for you or your business, uh, feel free to hit me up. I'd be happy to answer any questions that I can. Um, you can email me, you can hit me up on all the social channels. Uh, go to my website, wattsinnovations.com, and you can check it out. Uh, also, intelligentenergy.com. You can see a lot more information there on the fuel cell and what they've got going on. So, yeah, I think this is just incredible technology. We're just at the beginning, and I uh, can't wait to see where it goes. If you're heading to AUVSI next week in Chicago, uh, feel free to swing by my booth. Check this out in person. Um, you can say hello, we can talk drones and can talk to you more about this in particular. And uh, yeah, hopefully get a lot more content and, and video out there, maybe some Q&A and stuff. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Thanks again.